Hello. Good evening to one and all present here. I am Arundhati Mukherjee from Revered Media. We are delighted to have your presence at this webinar today. We welcome you all to today's top webinar on the topic Sustainable Development in Cement and Concrete. This event is organized by Indian Concrete Institute, New Delhi Center, in association with Civil Engineering and Construction Review, powered by Revered Media Private Limited. We would like to begin this webinar by welcoming engineer Mayank Raval, who is the director of Asian Laboratories and co-chairman, Indian Concrete Institute, New Delhi Center. Thank you. Uh, I am Mayank Raval, co-chairman, Indian Concrete Institute, New Delhi Center. Welcome you all. It's my great pleasure to invite you all today for the 12th webinar on the series of webinar our center is holding every week. Today's presentation topic is sustainable development in cement and concrete. And I welcome speaker for today's presentation, a very renowned man, personality, engineer Supervinik Das, Vice President North India, uh, Center in uh, Institute of, and Vice Chairman BIS CVD uh, Committee. Uh, I also welcome uh, today's moderator, uh, Dr. Vivian Kantarao, Senior Principal Scientist, CSIR, CRRI, Honorary Secretary, ICI Nutrition Center. I welcome ICI Nutrition Center team. I welcome ICI President Headquarter, Engineer Vinay Gupta ji. I also welcome Vice President North, Engineer Supertip Das, Chairman Nutrition Center, Engineer Rajiv Singhal ji. I welcome our Honorary Secretary, Dr. Vivian Kantarao ji. I welcome our treasurer, Mr. B.B. Vadwaji. I also welcome our media partner, and Masses River Media and team, and CCR team, especially Prabir Bhattacharyji. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now we would like to welcome engineer Rajiv Singhal, who is the chief engineer in CPWD and chairman, Indian Concrete Institute, New Delhi Center. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> I welcome you all to this uh, webinar on sustainable development in cement and concrete from Mr. Supradeep Das, who is Vice President North of uh, ICI, as well as he's a Vice Chairman <clears throat> of BIS CED 41 Committee. Uh, he has been actively participating in all the activities of New Delhi Center. I welcome you. And I also welcome Dr. Vibhiyal Kantarao, who is a senior principal scientist from CSIR, CRI, and also honorary secretary of New Delhi Center. He has been actively helping me in organizing all these webinars. I will just give you a brief introduction about the New Delhi Center. New Delhi Center is one of the 44 centers of ICI spread all over the country. ICI is a non-profit organization which aims to promote applications and new technologies in the field of concrete and concrete construction. It was founded on 7th of September in 1982 in Chennai. And from a modest beginning, now it has got 44 centers spread all over the country, 275 student chapters and more than 13,000 members. The New Delhi Center is one of those 44 centers with a membership of only 300. So, I want to increase the membership of the center and I would request all of those who are attending lecture webinar today and who have not become members of ICI so far to kindly go to our website, website of Indian Concrete Institute and kindly apply for membership. You will, you will be getting a lot of benefits as a as member of I, ICI. <clears throat> well, ICI's uh, New Delhi Center is holding webinars. Since 31st of July, we have been holding webinars on every Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. We are holding them in association with Construction Engineering and Construction Review and Revered Media, uh, who are our channel partners for organizing the webinars. I'm uh, grateful to them for providing their services. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would like to request our moderator for the day, Dr. V. V. L. Kantarao, who is the Senior Principal Scientist in CSIR, CRRI, and Honorary Secretary, Indian Concrete Institute, to introduce our esteemed speaker of today's webinar. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dhrinish Haji. Can I have his uh, slide, please? 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Kanta Rao. I am Honorary Secretary of uh, Indian Concrete Institute, New Delhi Center. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce uh, my uh, friend and advisor and uh, well wisher, uh, Engineer Supradeep Das Ji, who is the Vice, uh, Vice President of uh, ICA North uh, and today's speaker. He is a postgraduate in chemistry and uh, M.Tech with specialization in uh, cement and uh, silicate technology. Uh, uh, Supradeep Das Ji has uh, more than 30, 40 years of experience in the field of cement and concrete technology and 15 years of experience in uh, research and development. He is currently the Vice President of uh, Indian Concrete Institute North uh, and Editorial uh, Consultant of uh, CNCR, a premier general on uh, construction activities. His primary area of activities are concrete and uh, cement and concrete uh, making materials, uh, waterproofing and uh, thermal uh, insulations, repair and retrofitting of structures, construction chemicals. In this group, has, has been very active with the New Delhi Center for the past uh, 10 years. He was the secretary, technical committee for an uh, international conference on durability of concrete, ICDC, 2014. He has been associated with uh, all the seminars and conferences organized by ICA headquarters and New Delhi Center. As a consultant, he has been associated with a number of organizations such as uh, HR for a development of admixture for uh, RMC India, uh, quality assurance of uh, NCA ER in Delhi, NHPC, MES, NTPC, and many others. Engineer Supadeep Das has also been a member of uh, two technical committees of uh, ICA, Technical Committee 10, Handbook of, on Waterproofing of uh, Concrete Structures and uh, Industrial Flooring. For now, uh, now, the news is that the waterproofing handbook has been released and uh, everybody is encouraged to uh, uh, obtain a copy of the same for their uh, benefit and uh, use uh, at your end. For TC10, Technical Committee 10, he is the co-chairman and secretary and has con contributed three chapters uh, in the handbook. Uh, he was also a member of uh, Price Committee of Energy Conservation, Capexel, CMA and uh, currently vice chairman of uh, BIS Committee, CD41 on waterproofing and dam proofing. He is a life member of Indian Building Congress, Indian chapter of ACI, and many others. In his previous has written around 43 papers, one book chapter, and co-developer of two patents related to cement and concrete. With this brief welcome, with this brief introduction, I welcome uh, uh, Das Ji to make his presentation. And also, I request him to make a brief presentation on uh, the activities of uh, Indian Concrete Institute uh, no, uh, not uh, chapter. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kantarao And good afternoon to all. At the outset, I would like to thank New Delhi Center, especially Chairman Rajiv Singhalji, Kantarao Ji, and Mayank Ji for giving me this opportunity to present today's topic, uh, the sustainable development in cement and concrete. Before I start my presentation, I would like to brief all of you about ICI and its activities. It is clear. Is it clear? The slides? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Keep it presentation, uh, uh, presentation mode, sir. Huh? Keep it in presentation mode. Presentation mode. Ah, it is in presentation mode only. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's clear, sir. Yes. So, uh, as Mr. Rajiv Singhal uh, ji was talking about Indian Concrete Institute in brief about the New Delhi Center, I will let all people know about the activities of this premier professional body called Indian Concrete Institute purely on the basis of cement, concrete, and related materials. ICI has got its own um, uh, website called www.indianconcreteinstitute.org. It has been newly adopted, newly modified. I would like to request, uh, urge my fellow participants to visit this site 
and get the host of consider host of benefits and advantages through that center through that site ICI was founded in 1982 with its headquarters at Chennai. Uh, it was during a seminar and then it was formed. Today we have around 14,000 members and 44,000, so 44 centers spread across India. We have 351 organizations member, 266 student chapters. Our objectives are to promote growth on concrete construction, to disseminate knowledge and information, to train personnel, collaborate with national and international agencies in creating better understanding on concrete and construction technology, to identify R&D issues, encourage outstanding achievements in concrete construction technology, to collaborate with national and international agencies like American SEI, SEF, Singapore Concrete Institute, Concrete Institute of Australia, to institute and distribute awards for achievement in concrete construction technology, to arrange lecture series on selected topics of relevance to concrete construction. ICI also organizes periodic semi periodical seminars, conferences, workshops, exhibitions on the subject, and arranges lecture series. ICI publishes quarterly journal containing peer-reviewed technical papers, technical abstracts from 40 journals. ICI also offers an industry advisory service for problem solving in design, construction and maintenance and repair. We have the, our fold, the captains of construction industry, building materials, manufacturers, leading consultants, civil engineer, contractors, academicians, educational institute, lab equipment, manufacturer, testing labs and students. The knowledge Relating to concrete construction uh, technology is disseminated through workshops, seminars, conferences, exhibitions, seminars, training program, technical document. We have technical committees, around 11 technical committee working on various aspects of cement, concrete and construction. And through this technical committee, we had right now around 10 publications. These are all available in hard copy or while you are visiting the site, you can get a copy of uh, this um, publications. Recently, we have published the waterproofing of concrete structure. You can, if you are really interested in a hard copy, can write to the headquarter in Chennai or talk to the center chairman or journal vice president to get a copy of the same. We also joint initiative with government bodies like CPWD, BIS, BMTPC, CRRI, CBRI, municipal bodies, state PWDs, IRC, we also, in the line of the centers, we also instituted some annual awards which are being given by the headquarter. The Lifetime Achievement Award for each zone, outstanding concrete technologies, innovative uh, application of special concrete, best paper published in ICI journal, outstanding pre-stressed concrete structure, Young Scientist Award. We also have two international events which is uh, um, organized every four years and five years respectively, ACCON, ASEAN Conference on Ecstasy in Concrete, and IWC's Innovative World of Concrete, celebrated once in five years. This year, uh, in 2020, the uh, IWC was to be held in Delhi, but due to this pandemic, now it has been postponed to 2022. Concrete Day, as Mr. Rajiv uh, Singhal has told you, 7th September every day, that is the annual event being celebrated by each, all the centers uh, for the formation of ICI. We have a student chapter. Any student educational institute can become a student chapter if there are more than 50 students in civil or allied engineering. We remain committed to society at large and concrete lovers in particular. Uh, today's uh, presentation is primarily based on studies carried out. Uh, now I am coming to my uh, original uh, uh, presentation that is sustainable development in cement and concrete. This presentation is primarily based on studies carried out and recent development in, for sustainability in the field of cement and concrete. In recent time, with the Paris Agreement and India's commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emission by 33 to 35% by 2030, 
it has become a quite important issue with the government. India has, has already achieved 21% of its place to reduce the emission intensity and strongly working to achieve the pledge. You, are, you know that our Prime Minister has gone for the G10 meeting where this will be discussed in detail. India has already achieved 21% of its place to reduce the emission intensity and strongly working to achieve the pledge. Implementation of the Paris Agreement is essentially for the achievement of sustainable development goals and provides a roadmap for climatic and actions that will reduce the emission and build and build climatic resilience. Before we start discussing the various parameters, we should understand the term sustainability. Sustainability means meeting the present needs without compromising the needs of our future generation. Cement production and its uses in concrete plays a very big role in increasing carbon footprint. For the construction industry, sustainable means the protection of the natural environment, choice of non-toxic materials, reduction and re reuse of resources, waste minimization, and the use of life cycle cost analysis that, come, that includes the energy requirement. So sustainable development. Sustainable development is an organizing principle for meeting the human development. Goals will sub simultaneously sustaining the ability of natural system to provide the natural resources and ecosystem services on which the economy and the society depends. Sustainability development also includes the issue of environmental impact, resource use, social effects. Sustainable development can be defined as achieving social, economic, and environmental in parallel. This is the basically the foundation of this concept, the principles, and therefore it is made up of three: economy, society, and the environment. Then comes the you know three spheres. That is the economy, social, and ecological. It has been divided into three categories, and the confluence is called the sustainable. The, if you see the uh, uh, figure, it can be thought of in three spheres, the environment, the economy, and the society. This three-sphere framework was initially proposed by the economist Rene Passet in 1979, and it has also been worded as economy, economic, economic, environmental, and social, or ecology, economy, and equity, three E's. This has also been expanded by some authors to include a fourth pillar of culture. Institution, governance, or alternative reconfigure four domains, four domains of the social, ecology, economy, politics, and culture. So these are known as the con uh, three constant parts of the sustainable development. Primary sustainable issues are climatic change, greenhouse emission, gas emission, carbon dioxide emission, energy utilization, less nature resources, utilization of byproduct, waste material, and water wastage shortage. So we'll start with the climatic change, and then we'll go to the uh, impact on cement and concrete. So climatic change is uh, in the sustainable developmental goal 13 is about the climatic action and is one of the 17 sustainable development goals established by the United Nations in 2015. Its aim is to take urgent action to combat climatic change and its impact. The impacts are on human system, the effects destroys, uh, destroys crop and the food production, causes disease and health, destruction of loss, economical livelihood, migration of climatic climate refugees. Then comes the greenhouse emission. Greenhouse gas emission are the greenhouse gases vented to Earth atmosphere because of humans. The greenhouse effect of their 50 billion tons uh, by uh, uh, the coal industry, oil industries um, uh, causes climatic change. Most is the ca carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuel, coal, oil, natural gas. Human caused emissions have increased the atmospheric carbon dioxide by 50%. If you see that fossil fuel and industry, industry 
इंडस्ट्री at this curve emission rates before 2030 temperature may have been increased by 1.5 degree which is a limit of g7 countries and aspirational level limit of the paris agreement so now we come to the construction industry the three pillars of the construction industry the three pillar of sustainable development in construction industry aim is to provide an effective framework to guide future government policies of construction it will also place greater stress on balancing the three pillar of sustainability if you see the social economic and environment social it comes the what uh, concrete building must provide safe and healthy and comfortable interior structural integrity weather and fire protection acoustic protection in economic concrete building must be durable low maintenance reusable and energy efficient and in energy and environment energy consumption and greenhouse gas emission over the whole life should be very low sustainable development can also be defined as achieving this uh, objective in parallel they are all in parallel now if you talk about the cement scenario cement is the in key ingredient in making concrete but not sustainable whereas the and the cement is a part of concrete which can be made sustainable one ton of cement to make one ton of cement you need 1.5 metric tons of limestone 0.25 metric tons of coal and 80 to 90 units of electricity so thus and for one metric ton of cement it emits one metric ton of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere but there is a catch concrete absorbs around 30% of the amount co2 through the carbonation in the cement production so the it is uh, remained with the around uh, 70% of the carbon dioxide emission during the manufacture of cement current global cement production capacity is around 550 million tons india's production capacity has been sustainable rise from 98 metric tons to to uh, 445 metric tons at a jump of around 300% and this contributes to 6% of the carbon emission when a material becomes an integral to the structure of concrete it's important to analyze the environmental impact to conclude if the material is sustainable as it is prevalent in the presentation of the role of cement concrete sustainable development is this has been discussed in details so when we talk about so we need to talk about cement concrete sustainability issue there are six points which we should uh, look into first is a look for the durability aspect use of alternative material that is supplementary cementitious material use less cement use construction chemical such as super plasticizer for less cement lesser quantity of water for the same workability use of less energy to produce cement use of recycled aggregate from cnd west it is generally agreed that the production of cement is expensive and ecologically harmful co2 principal gas conduit to greenhouse effect nox sox are the very hazardous emission generated relatively high volume of the conventional portland cement the use of raw material can reduce the co2 emission in cement production scm are now widely being used for making durable concrete and reducing the co2 emission exploiting the thermal mass of the concrete to create energy optimized solution for heating and cooling residential office buildings in this presentation the environmental impact of the cement manufacture has been assessed on the basis of literature review the use of supplementary cementitious material as pulverized flyers ground uh, granulated blast furnace slag rice ash as silica fume have been used for reducing the weight of the cement in the concrete mixes to achieve the desired compressive strength of the concrete without compromising compromising the um, 
uh, um, desired uh, uh, durability. Uh, being a cement PFA GGBS SF to achieve desired high strength for the structural use. The addition of SCM has reduced the cement proportion in the concrete, thereby making it relatively sustainable. The results have been assessed on the basis of reduction of embodied energy of the concrete. The use of recycled aggregates from concrete, from the old concrete structure, also plays very important environmental impact in the future program for sustainable development. Now, let's start with the durability aspect. Durability, most of the durability uh, concrete may be defined as the ability of concrete to resist weathering action, chemical attack, and abrasion while maintaining the desired engineering properties. The less durable of the product, the shorter the service life is. One of the main characteristics influencing durability of concrete is its permeability to ingress of water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, chloride, sulfate, and other potential deleterious uh, substances. The internal and external restraints of volume changes in concrete results in crack that promotes permeability in the concrete, thus becomes a part of the cyclic action. Now, let's come to the admixture. There are the admixture in the concrete has been divided in two parts. One is called the mineral admixture. Second is the part is the chemical admixture. They have classified mineral admixture mean the supplementary cementitious material. They are highly pozzolonic, normally pozzolonic, weak pozzolonic. They can be silica fume, rice ash, class A, uh, class A fly ash, which has got a high, higher than... Uh, 70% of uh, silicon dioxide, then bottom ash, uh, burnt rice ash, slowly cooled ground slag. And in chemical, they are it again is classified into four categories that is the ac accelerator, retarder, water reducing, and air retaining. They all play a very important role in the sustainability issues of the cement and concrete. Now, when you talk about the um, role of SCMs, it has got performance benefits and the sustainability benefits. In sustainability benefits, it, 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 it has an enhanced strength, reduces alkali silica reaction because when it, you are uh, compensating with 30 to 70 percent of this material, inert, it, it automatically reduces the alkali silica reactivity. It becomes a de densified body, thus reduces the permeability, raises sulfate attack, raises thermal stress. In the sustainability, it reduces the clinker factor uh, when you are making a blended and contributes to lead, carry, lead credits. And the sustainable concrete should have a very low inherent energy requirement, be produced a little waste, may be made from the uh, re plentiful uh, resources on the earth, produces durable concrete, have a very high thermal mass and be made with a recycled material. Advantage of SCM in manufacture of cement, it reduces the energy consumption, carbon dioxide emission, utilizes the waste and byproducts, development of new cement with less life cycle impact. And in the concrete, you can use this SCM as a supplementary ma cementitious material, use of chemical admixture, use of recycled aggregate, renewable energy for concrete production, transport of constituents, materials, and concrete. So thus, concrete can be made sustainable by adopting these uh, six points. Now, type of mineral admixture in concrete, the pulverized fly ash, ground, ground blast furnace slag, you all know about this. And then you have got silica fume, metaculine, rice ash, ash, natural pozzolana, limestone powder, ultra fine slag. The fly ash. Fly ash is a basically is collected through a mechanical collector, electrostatic precipitator in a thermal power plant where the pulverized uh, coal is uh, burnt at a high temperature to get this. And it's a the generated fly ash requires very large area for disposal as well as remains a source of environmental pollution. In India, an area of 65,000 acres of land is being occupied by the ash pond and its generation is expected to 
across 235 million tons. Now, this is the chart flow chart of the fly ash generation. You can see the pulverized uh, fly ash is uh, fly, um, uh, coal is being burnt, and these are the uh, flue gas and the fly ash is collected to the bottom ash and the electrostatic precipitator, and five percent of the gas went out to the as a flue gas. Fly ash chemically reacts with the byproduct calcium hydroxide released by the chemical reaction between the cement and water to form an additional cementitious product that improves many desirable properties of concrete. Compared to cement and water, the chemical reaction between fly ash and calcium hydroxide is slower, resulting in delayed hardening of the concrete allows better hardening. Delayed concrete hardening coupled with the variability of the fly ash properties can create significant challenge for the concrete products. It reduces the segregation and bleeding in the concrete. If you see the morphology of the uh, fly ash particles at 2000 magnification, you can see they are spherical in size, which provides a ball bearing effect when used in a fly ash blended mix, thereby increasing its workability. And workability is directly proportional to the amount of fly ash added to the mix. Higher the fly ash content, higher the workability of fly ash blended mix. Indian standard specification has already uh, got uh, three specification. IS3812 is a fly ash used as pozzolano and admixture. And 1489, when you are making Portland pozzolano cement. Our second is the when you are making a calcined clay based Portland pozzolano cement. So there are two, Portland Pozzolana cement, fly ash based, and the calcium clay based. The chemical requirement as per IS3812 is the, if um, the Fe2O3 plus l 2 SiO2, minimum 70%, it's a grade one. Silicon dioxide, minimum 35%. Loss on ignition is maximum 12% because it has unburned coal in it. The, the specific surface of this um, fly ash is in the 320 meters square per kg as the plane fineness, compressive strength. When you're adding, it should be more than 80% of the plane cement water. Particle retained on 45 micron is 34%. ASTM has also specified into three categories that N, F, C. F is the more than 70%. N is also more than 70%, but the um, N is basically metaculin, which is naturally available, pozzolana. Then comes the ground granulated blast furnace slag. The ground granulated blast furnace slag is uh, available by, uh, obtained by quenching molten iron slag in a byproduct iron and steel making from a blast furnace in water to produce granulated blast furnace slag. It is a um, uh, rapidly cooled and then you get this ground uh, uh, granulated slag. And this, in India, we get around 300 to 440 kg of ground granulated slag per ton of pig or crude iron produced. GGBS is a highly cementitious and high in CHS calcium, uh, silicate hydrate strength enhancing compound. It is sometimes it is known as hydraulic cement. Enhancing improves the ultimate strength, durability, appearance of the concrete. If you see the morphology, uh, GGBS consists of micro-sized angular particles because of its grinding to a lesser uh, fine particles. So ground, ground difference between the ground generated GGBS and pliers. There is a wide variation because pliers is low in calcium oxide, uh, but rich in silica, alumina, while GGBS is relatively high in calcium oxide. The combination of these two materials can be more beneficial when used as a stabilizing agent than using it individually. Fly ash reduces the viscosity of SCC significantly. It enhances the filling ability, passing ability, reduces segregation and building potential of SCC. And fly ash is also the best opinion or option for producing a cost-effective self-compacting concrete with a flowability of 40, 4, 650 to 800 millimeter flow. 
Another difference between the slag and cement is that while flyers will rarely surpass 35% of the cement content, cement can substitute more than 50% of the cement content or even higher for different applications. This contributes to the large cost saving from slag cement and helps in producing sustainable concrete. Now comes the effect of density. You know, the density of all the SCM are lower than the, uh, the uh, main uh, basic material that is the Portland cement. And this effect of density plays an important role by increasing the volume by at least 3% with 10% of replacement. This is made, come the third, uh, the third one in the, this is silica fume is a byproduct of uh, byproduct resulting from reduction of high purity uh, quartz with coal in an electric arc furnace. You see the particle size and the morphology, it's uh, around uh, 2000 uh, projection, typical, it's a, again, it's a, a spherical in uh, nature. It, with the addition of silica plume, there is an increase in CHS gel formation, which leads to increase in strength, makes it impervious, makes it impervious, low permeability, low capillary porosity, superior quality, and a high strength of concrete. But just by adding silica fume, um, and it also decreases the leaching on the formation of calcium hydroxide. Now, if you see the uh, uh, effect of or attributes of fly um, um, silica fume or micro silica in concrete. Micro silica in concrete contributes to strength and durability in two ways. When water is said to be, uh, water to add to OPC, hydration occurs forming two products in the presence of micro silica, the silicon dioxide from the micro silica will react with the calcium hydroxide to produce more aggregate binding CHS as follows. C carbon hydroxide plus CiSiO2 plus is give, gives to CHS. The reaction reduces the amount of calcium hydroxide in the concrete. The weaker the calcium hydroxide does not contribute to strength. And in the microfiller, because it is a highly fine, finer material, this microfiller effects that greatly reduce the permeability, makes the concrete dense, improve the paste to aggregate bond silica for a fume concrete to conventional concrete. It reacts rapidly, providing high early strength and durability. Efficiency, efficiency micro silica is three to five times of that OPC and consequently, consequently vastly improved concrete performance can be obtained. As a filler, micro silica decreases the average size of the pores of the cement paste. So how this micro silica works? It fills in the voids. It has got a highly pozzolonic it consumes lime from the cement reaction. It has got a dense packing, expel water. When there is a dense packing, when it is densified, the water requirement will be less. So in that case, the porosity will be low and more water for demolding improves durability, improves plasticity. In the, when we are adding in the, as a concrete, as a highly pozzolonic, improves final strength, improves um, for the filler use. Now comes the rice husk as the fourth one. Rice husk as replacement level was considered in the study 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% by weight of cement. The durability performance of RHE blended cement exposed to Soviet uh, sodium sulfate solution was evaluated through the compressive strength, reduction in strength, weight loss. Test results showed that I RHE can satisfactorily use as a cement replacement material in order to increase the durability of concrete. Concrete containing 10 to 20% of RHA replacement showed excellent durability of to sulfate attack. It has got a very high amount of silica. It reduces the permeability because it is very smaller in size. It reduces because an inert material reduces the heat of hydration. It also improves the resistance to chloride and sulfate attack. Then comes the metapurine. Metacurinin is a material which is basically not an industrial waste. It is basically mined uh, and it's a formation when ordinary clay and clay, kaolin clay are thermally activated. This has been being used because we have got a vast reserve of the uh, kaolin clay and ordinary clay. So we are trying to 
uh, use this material as an alternative because it produces the strength to the concrete. Reduce, uh, again, it does the same job as the uh, silica film, uh, as a fly ash also, because bleeding of concrete is considerably reduced upon metacurine addition. Replacement criteria of different material. Fly ash, if you take a low volume fly ash content, 10 to 30, it's a high volume, 14, 89, 19, it is around, uh, can be 50%, but the uh, specification is specified at 10 to 25%, GGBS to 25 to 60%, silica fume, IS 15388 is 5 to 10%. You see the different types of um, uh, comp comparison of different types of mineral admixtures. You can see the origin, they are all industrial byproduct except HRM and the metaphylene, which is natural resources. Fineness is from fly as 3000 to it has gone to uh, 25,000 for silica fume. Replacement, we do basically in silica fume 5 to 10 percent, and workability uh, is less because it's finer in um, of the, it's finer in, uh, um, in a specific surface, and but it is a substantial strength gain within the seven days. What is the attributes of the mineral admixture? It costs less, results in energy saving because a less heat of hydration, uh, more uh, percentage of blending, improve workability, improve extensibility, reduce the alkali aggregate reaction, increase water tightness, this become impervious, increase strength, less water demand, this continuous capillary pore system is sometimes used as a integ um, uh, integral water cooling compound powder because it, it discontinues the uh, capillary pore system in the concrete, produces better quality of concrete with a better finish because it is very high fineness, reduces greenhouse uh, emission, gas emission, which associated with the production of cement, preserve natural resources. So SCM can be used in a big way, and then in that in resultant would be the natural resources will be saved. Now I will come to the basically the chemical admixture. Chemical admixture for concrete or additives for cement clinker termed as additive admixture. A material other than cement, sand, aggregate, water, cement added to the concrete before or during the mixing with a view to modify the properties of concrete in the plastic stage or as well as in the hardened stage as known as chemical admixture. Also, sometimes we call it as a fifth ingredient of concrete. What are the reasons for adding this chemical admixture to meet the concreting requirements to provide modification in the mixed design, reduction of cost of concreting operation. When we are using this material, we are also increasing um, the workability and thus the water is reduced at a certain water cement ratio, you are getting the same workability by using this admixture. It clearly automatically reduces the water content in the concrete and at the same time, it reduces or control the breeding in the concrete. It also increases early and ultimate strength, durability, MOE and absorption. IS 9103 has got all these uh, uh, standard specification for chemical admixture. We have we have lots of admixtures, but generally uh, related to um, sustainability, we can use air entering admixture, water reducing admixture, accelerator, accelerating admixture, water proofing admixture, retarder. All the five will definitely directly or indirectly help in reducing the water content in the concrete. The first version of the uh, was in the IS 456. Admixture may be used in the concrete only with the approval of the engineer. Second version in 1979, admixture may be used in the approval of engineer chart. Admixture shall conform into IS 9103. Third version, the clause of admixture has been modified in view of the uh, in view of the uh, availability of new types of admixture, including super plasticizer and shall conform into IS 9103. So uh, as on date, the 
use an application of uh, admixtures, the plasticizer, super plasticizers, super plasticizer like polycarboxylate. This is the type, the uh, fourth generation admixture. Um, this is SNF is sulfonated um, uh, uh, SNF, and second is the melamine based. These are two uh, plastic super plasticizer are being used. Polycarbonic oxalate is a um, fourth generation uh, material, and it's a highly, highly. Uh, uh, it has got uh, water uh, uh, limit of water reduction is very high. It can, uh, uh, in uh, if you take the uh, only super plasticizer or the plasticizer, plasticizer based on the sugar, hydrocarbonic acid, processed carbohydrates, limited water reduction is up to 50%. Doses you can go from 0 0.01 to 0.6%. Larger doses may cause bleeding, segregation, air content, undesirable setting. But in the case of uh, SNF and S, um, SNF, SMF, or the blended SNF or SMF or polycarboxylate, it can reduce its water up to 30%, doses up to 3%, and no adverse effect on the high dose. If you see the water reduction in a normal plasticizer, if we take a uh, concrete with a water cement 0.5, if we uh, with the normal plasticizer, it will be a 8 to 10% reduction, super plasticizer 18 to 25. High performance based super plasticizer, PC based is 34 to 36%. You can see yourself the what is the how much benefit it gives when we are using high performance based super plasticizer. These super plasticizer are used in concrete to produce concrete with very low water cement ratio. As I told you, water cement ratio as low as 0 0.28 can be achieved. Produce concrete with reduced cement. See, concrete can be produced by reducing cement content by 20 to 30 percent without affecting the normal strength and the produce flowing concrete, flowable concrete can be produced without reducing the cement content or changing the water cement ratio. That too without causing segregation and bleeding and excellent for heavy reinforcement where it has to go the nook and corner of the structure. So you can from there you see the how much important role the super plasticizer plaster play uh, in the improving the sustainability of the concrete, cement and concrete. These are the physical characteristics of PCA, SNF, SMF, and lignosulfonate. Their density varies between 1.09 to 1.29, and solid content is again 35 to 42%. This is as per well, um, NAPTA-based NAPTA uh, study, where there's uh, three days, seven days, and 28 days, if you can see, there is an increase, there is no Comparatively, there is no decrease on the normal concrete. If you take the effect of plastic and slum concrete, you can see that at 1.8% of doses of super plasticizer, the slump loss up to 90 minutes, it is there. Or in 2.5%, it can go up to 120 minutes. So, and if you take a 0% for the, the plasticizing effect or the workability slump loss, will be up to only 25 minutes. So how much important role it plays? It is basically a graph between the slump and the super plasticizer by weight of cement. So in ASTM, they have classified into uh, uh, eight categories. They are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is the um, uh, uh, table of the uh, super plasticizer, normal plasticizer, normal water reducing admixture as per IS. 9103. You can see by admixture, it will always have a plus uh, compressive strength than the normal concrete. It will be always a 10 to 15 percent higher strength than the normal concrete. Effect of the super plasticizer on the fresh concrete. It reduces the entrained air if it is reduced to reduce water cement ratio. Workability, dramatic increase in workability. No undue bleeding or water reduced super plasticized concrete. Segregation may occur in super plasticized flowing concrete, but if the fines are insufficient, entrained air content will be less at the time of placing the concrete. Super plasticized concrete tends to retard the setting time. Now comes to the, the fourth point that is the 
construction and demolition waste. Concrete structure are generally expected to last 70 to 800 years. However, most of the, them built in an era that has been demolished much earlier than the intended service life. This is mostly attributed to the following reasons. Outdated designs, limitation in the land availability, increased space requirement, technical problems, performance of degradation of structure. This waste often includes variety of materials depending on the how and where it has been generated like concrete, metal, bricks, glass, plastics, organics. How this is the process chart of the waste uh, concrete recycling that in demolition, the rubbles are coming and then it is again to a uh, recycling plant, recycled aggregate, again mixed with the, uh, in the red mix concrete and it goes to the making of uh, concrete again. So this is the structure where the uh, CND waste are being used. And recycling, it, what happens? It reduces the cost of aggregates, disposal cost, environmental. You, and see, you have seen, I think, in Delhi, the people are dumping this uh, CND waste on the roadside and make, say, e ecological hazards. So this, by this uh, recycling of CND waste, then definitely the environmental damage will be reduced consumption of natural resources and valuable landfill space. Recycled core segregate may be the more durable than the virgin material. It can also be used as a residential construction. Roadmap, as far as the India is concerned, how it has been now designed. All states to set up CND waste cycling material facilities in all cities, over 1 million people population. Agencies that generate in bulk quantity to deliver CND waste at a recycling plant, order to deliver the collection points to be provided by the local authorities as and when recycling plant is commissioned in a city, it should be made mandatory to use a specific percentage of construction material from the recycled material. In our country, if you see the Norway, the UK, Germany, they have all has got more than hundreds of recycling plants. India has got right now three recycling plants and going to have more than, more than 50 in the coming time. Present status as per the standard specifications are concerned. Bureau of Indian Standard has revised IS383, allowed use of recycled aggregates in concrete. IRC121 has a, a brought out a new code guidelines for use of CND waste in road sector not for, um, and then Central Pollution Control Board formulated guidelines on environmental management of CND waste. So some work is going on. We hope in the next coming years, this will be uh, much more, um, much more oriented and it will be uh, most of the 30% to 50% of the CND waste will be used in making concrete as a recycled concrete. So there are several measures that can reduce CO2 emission from the cement manufacturing process. Apart from the use of waste heat as an alternative source of energy, because when we are uh, making the calcium carbonate to calcium oxide, lots of carbon dioxide heat is generated. So that can be waste heat can be used up. CO2 capture and storage technology. This is a very new, newly developed um, technology. This is called CCS the carbon dioxide emits during the manufacture can be stored and can be reused in phases. Reduction of clinker to cement ratio. Naturally, when you are, um, uh, cement clinker is um, being uh, substituted with this um, uh, SCM can be blended. So CM um, clinker can be redux, uh, reduced. Use of alternative biomass fuel, instead of using fossil fuel, we can go but uh, we can change over to a biomass fuel. Use of alternative raw materials. There are many. We can you know, got if we get a chance, we can use it. Development of raw low carbon cement, geopolymer cement, green cement, calcium sulfur aluminate cement, uh, which is known as uh, casal, uh, formed by forming of uh, calcium um, uh, sulfur aluminate, a and 
Portland limestone cement, which is being new, right now being studied by BIS, they are the uh, newly developed calcium carbonate concrete and many others. So there are avenues where the substantial development can be made in the field of cement and concrete. Rather, uh, other than this, the heating, ventilation, air conditioning system regularly maintained and updated can help reduce uh, a building carbon footprint by being as efficient as they can be without wasting excess energy. Installing low energy humidifiers instead of electric steam ones will also help. So we are talking about the carbon capture and sequestration. The carbon sequestration is the process of capturing and storing atmospheric carbon dioxide. It is one method of reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere with the goal of reducing the global climatic change. I think in India, two or three cement plants have started this where this uh, carbon dioxide is captured and stored in the coal beds or in the saline. And as and when you re require, you can use it up. Then we have got the carbon pure technology. It is a very, the curing of carbon elements by diffusing carbon dioxide into it under controlled pressure and temperature, one of the popular methods of accelerated curing. So calcium with the carbon dioxide, it uh, uh, undergoes the carbonation, we get the calcium carbonate solid limestone. This is also a new technology. A um, lot of areas, people are working on it, the construction people. So the cement industry is likely to, as I have already told you, cement industry is likely to play a role in reducing greenhouse gases, greenhouse gas emission to combat anthropogenic climate change. Many car decarbonization process suggests that direct specific emission level of around 350 to 410 kg of CO2 per ton of cement will be, can, be, can be done. Increasing clinker substitution, alternative fuel use, thermal energy efficiency can only lead to specific emission per ton of cement falling from 730 kg to around 540 to 590 kg per carbon dioxide per ton by 2050. Alternatively, lower CO2 intensity cement, such as, have, such as um, low carbon cement has been suggested. IPCC and IEA agree that main technology group be able to achieve the remaining required emission reduction in carbon capture, storage, and carbon curing. So in this presentation, the environmental impact of the cement manufacturing and concrete Construction has been assessed on the basis of the studies carried out. The use of uh, SCM, I mean the su supplementary cement uh, materials in combination with construction chemical have shown excellent result for a sustainable solution and reducing the weight of cement in the concrete mixes to achieve desired performance and durability of concrete for use in construction projects. The variety of material being used as SCM is large and diverse. Because of this, it is very difficult to find one size fits all method of characterizing this group of material that will enable accurate prediction of performance in concrete. A sustainable solution for the global construction industry can be partial substitution OPC by use of SCM. Uh, source from industrial end of life product that contains calcareous siliceous or aluminous material. Can, EOL material include fly ash, silica fume, natural porcelanic material like sugarcane, bagasse ash, palm oil fuel ash, rice ash, ash mine tiling, marble dust, construction and demolition debris uh, can be used. Studies have revealed that these materials to be cementitious and porcelanic in nature. They are used as SCM would decrease the amount of cement used in the production of concrete thus carbon emission associated with cement production will decrease. In addition to cement substitution, EOL products as SCM have also served as force and also as fine aggregate in the production of eco-friendly concrete. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, you. for your uh, nice lecture and uh, uh, useful lecture rather. Uh, Hello, am I audible? Ah, sir, audible, sir. Audible, sir. Audible, sir. Audible, sir. Thank you so much. 
now uh, it's very uh, sustainability is always uh, a, a burning topic uh, and uh, any number of lectures actually uh, we listen we tend to learn uh, new things and uh, uh, go forward and we want to learn more things also so that way it's a very useful and uh, informative lecture sir thank you so much for taking your time uh, in fact i have invited some questions and all i think there is one question uh, uh, raised by one mr sunil merugu uh but uh, during your presentation also you have answered the question so yes, is, I have <laughs> what is the maximum percentage of addition of silica film to concrete uh, so, that i have already told that's what you said 5 to 10% you have in, uh, in yeah. so maybe on average 8% i think people use no i think we use around 8% 8% yeah that's why he uh, he said uh, okay sir also he uh, thanked actually okay okay so, Right. Sir, uh, because there are no other questions, I want to ask from my from my side uh, a few of them just for uh, uh, knowledge sake actually. Uh, sir, this kind these days uh, we keep hearing ternary cement, ternary blended cement. Mm. No, uh, ternary so, cement is a three component cement. Yeah, that's right. Ah, ah. There was I think there was an IS code also now on this. Uh, yes, this it has been made. Composite cement also we have come up with a IS. composite cement where the cement quantity component has been kept at a very minimum sir so is it being coming to market and being used no or no no not at all whatever ah, the uh, cement i have discussed ji they are in a very initial stages like geopolymer right. geopolymer is also a sustainable uh, material but Correct. it has um, uh, it has they are only up to the um, testing and uh, research level right. it has not been no technology transfer has been done for these type of products you know what i am saying that there is already one is code for uh, tadari uh, blended cement is it being manufactured or marketed or uh, uh, what is its status sir no 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 uh, not yet not yet that's what ha uh, okay okay not yet i say not yet like we are coming up with a calcium portland cement okay limestone okay. portland cement the bis um, specification is coming out Uh -huh. i think in a in in a month or two but that has not been put into marketing or commercial selling so but what is the means of role of calcium carbonate there is it only filler or uh, some other purpose also is there which one which one calcium carbonate in the cement potent cement no calcium carbonate you said no calcium carbonate cement you are saying no uh, i said when you are putting the carbon dioxide in the concrete Ah, it, okay. it reacts with the uh, calcium oxide to become calcium carbonate. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So okay, your yeah. curing is taken care of by the carbon dioxide. Carbon curing. So you want to it, cure the concrete you are talking at all, right? Because that carbon dioxide is emitting that has to be used up somewhere. Exactly, that's right. That's so right. that's why the carbon dioxide um, uh, curing is there. Carbon. I curing. see. Okay, okay, sir. So can I say something on this? Hello. Ha, sir, sir. Sir. You can actually put off your uh, slides of presentation. Maybe you can see each other and all. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, रिएक्शन ऑफ दिमेंट इज ऑल्सो वेरी रेपिड the compatibility of the cement and admixture is lost yeah because it is a very um, um, fineness is a uh, not in a uniform uh, length right. so it gets affected and at the same time you are also using up lots of energy to yes, yes. to make that concrete fine the cement fine so it is not uh, required actually so but our is code is giving any i mean uh, Uh, no is 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 silent about it oh. because of obvious reason because once you are getting a higher fineness cement you will start talking about opc for, uh, ppc 43 and ppc 53 <laughs> they don't want to um, uh, 
cat categorize the uh, blended cement because what happened in blended cement the clinker are of not very high um, calcium carbonate oriented so that's why the better quality uh, fly ash or granulated ggbs or the um, other things are added to get that the strength and the parameters thank you ek sapadeep ji aapne jo bhi baat kiya co2 curing ha ji this is a new thing uh, which is coming up these days yes but is co2 curing being practically used and uh, will it affect the reinforcement corrosion will it no any... because it becomes a calcium carbonate mm -hmm. it will not affect the um, uh, reinforcement it will become a more denser type of material in middle east people have started using this carbon dioxide to make calcium carbonate concrete curing carbon dioxide cal carbon cal uh, calcium carbonate cured concrete they are making it because in india we are using lots of water for curing then there was talk that we should not waste water on curing because uh, we are already short of you know uh, sweet water so then we started using curing compounds yes okay then the issue came that curing compounds sometimes they leave a you know different kind of color on the yes on the yes, concrete yeah. yes so yeah. now this co2 curing uh, if it is used in a big way it can be a game changer because you know we it will can be, be a consuming, game changer definitely yeah, we, it can we'll be a game changer save water changer. we'll save our chemicals and we will you know consume carbon dioxide which is which is otherwise a waste product exactly so, exactly i think then it the, is not said a, a waste it is a, it is increasing the greenhouse gas emission yeah yeah so that that has to be reduced hmm. india has taken a pledge of reducing to 33% hmm. but unless and until we reduce that carbon dioxide gas emission by um, not using the petrol driven car matlab energy emitted car it is very difficult to maintain Because we I have come down to 15% but to come to 33% it is a huge task because in none of the work even the big contractors they are not using this nobody has gone in for co2 curing Sir, this is a very new concept. आपको पता है सर इन इंडिया the how the construction goes, the water we basically we are curing. It is not basically going inside the concrete. It is means to prevent the water yeah. inside the concrete not, not to go. Out. So yeah. otherwise the hydration will be not be there and yeah. the concrete will not attain its uh, strength. That's why. Yeah. But what happened? हमने बोरी डाल दिया. Bori sugya sat the nobody mm. uh, looks at that oh, uh, and then when i am talking about the curing compound uh, mayank is there curing compound is basically again it has got a reflective index mm. so that the whatever moisture is there which will be remain there but it is not economically viable mm. so people they don't go for this mm. but sir nowadays a third generation curing compound has come they called it water based It yes. what actually seals the pores of the concrete, so doesn't allow the water to permeate out. So your strength development is almost ninety five percent. Efficiency index increases. So that's very good compared to the wet based curing compound and resin based curing compound. In fact, in my last slide, what I have uh, depicted, they are the basically the new age technology <laughs> can be used to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. If you take the um, the Kasal, Kasal is yeah. a a tin jade cement. People are not using. It's what a, is that? See how how they put carbon dioxide in this in concrete. I mean they put I mean some sort of a uh, chamber by 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 injecting. Injecting. Yes. Okay. But, but, that will not the the hmm? but that will not change the permeability. But that will not change the permeability once you I mean inject. I mean no. Well, it is become a calcium carbonate stone. Calcium carbonate is a stone. No, that's true. Uh, so that so, so, you say that when it is in a green stage, we in have to green stage, in green okay. stage. In green stage. Our second thing in Middle East, people have used once in a twice, or in uh, European country, it is being used, but not in a big sense. Like I am talking about the carbon storage, that is also I think Alta Tech has come up with two or three plants where they are using this storing of car carbon dioxide. As and when required, you take out and use it. So like water curing, we do when the construction is done. We do the de-shattering and start curing. But can yeah. uh, carbon dioxide be used at such a stage for normal okay. construction? Uh. For normal construction, when we de-shatter mm. and mm. we either put a wax 
or a curing compound or we start put a gunny bag and we start pouring water to ah. prevent the escape of water yes so can carbon dioxide be used in such this kind of construction oh yes why not why not but what about we... the pores in the concrete uh -huh. that will that will react and will will get a carbon calcium carbonate but concrete. how the concrete will be how the concrete will be injected the co2 sir whatever the calcium in the cement and the concrete is there that will react with the carbon dioxide but how to inject co2 so there are there are mechanisms are there okay okay will it not affect the environment ha sir if we are curing with the carbon dioxide will hmm. it not affect the environment not in a open remember. structure the not in a open remember. structure sir yeah. aap bataiye concrete mein aapne wo kiya hai ki uh, uh, steam cured steam cured yes. in a controlled condition yes yes so in that case there will be a controlled condition there will be steam jackets will be there and then the gas will be injected Okay. To take further uh, the singer's uh, question, actually, so we know the uh, corrosion uh, for reinforcement is because of the loss of uh, alkalinity in the concrete, right? So when we are using uh, carbon dioxide curing, the carbon dioxide car calcium oxide is getting reduced there. So the alkalinity is getting reduced there. So does it actually promote uh, uh, corrosion of reinforcement? No, sir. No calcium carbonate is a salt. Basically, if you see. calcium yeah. carbonate it will become a stone yes. it will become a form so there will be no pores involved there okay and the the carbonation of the concrete also will not be there what happens the carbonation takes place in the concrete the initial 40 to 50 mm of concrete is carbonated it doesn't goes inside the reinforcement okay okay but but in the carb in the uh, concrete if there is a porosity flaws capillaries then the moisture will ingress and then react is a chemical equation again the fe2o3 converts to fe3o4 mm -hmm. so there are some questions from our audience sir one question uh, how far we have reached in using rhesus cash as an admixture for cement material in india oh it Do is very sir it is basically rhesus cash of its inherent quality it is being used but rice as as is used in different uh, means in india like uh, when we are making um, some sugar cane juice and all these thing sometimes the sugar bagasse and the rice as as are being used for the as a fuel so we are not using in a big way the rice as as it is a very voluminous material so we generally we don't use and there is no cost problem with the uh, uh, disposal of rice husk rice yeah, husk has only when you will get when you will burn the rice husk in a controlled condition in a oxygen chamber then only you get yeah, i used to see three i recommends the latest cold recommends is a 5% i think uh, rice husk cash recommendation is there yeah recommendation uh, is there cement uh, uh, manufacturer yes yeah. but like uh, you I like to what like it, people are using it uh, i don't know that but rice husk as we do not have any specification right now yes mm. the lime reactivity of the rice husk as the fineness of the rice husk as the silica content of the rice husk as it is not mentioned so we do not have the brief trial basis we can use it no brief specification mentioned in is 263 i think page number 2 probably but okay. uh, yeah it is brief man it is there but uh, i don't think it anybody is, will, it is yeah. just a guideline you can Guide, use yeah. rice correct correct yes, yes right so further research of course uh, rajiv ji we need further research in this area and uh, definitely any research uh, is welcome uh, uh, in this area i think yes yes i yes. agree with that there is one more question sir from uh, himal saha the two questions are there what is the current percentage of cnd waste used in india and is there any specific uh, time guideline to reach 30 to 50% of cnd waste of use in Kong, india two questions sir we yeah. we we came up with a seminar in 2013 yes with the i think rajiv ji knows that chennai yeah no in delhi delhi i was munshi came here we made a yeah, yeah. line of cnd waste at Correct. that point of time it is 2 to 3% today we do not have that much number of uh, um, uh, rec recycling unit to recycle the Material according to their generic nature, 
Uh, now I do. I have already presented that right. Um, that CND waste has got glass. It has got metal. It has got um, uh, the brick. It has got um, aggregates. So it has not been segregated. So it is in a very infancy stage. There are only three plants in India, and according to CPWD's last to last uh, seminar where Khandelwalji was there, he was talking about to putting up DMRC as a put up a some uh, plant recently and so it is i think another 50 recycling plants is going to come up in the next two years i think is 383 recommends 20% i think uh, for uh, yes. non structural concrete yes 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 i is 383 yes, yes. that is yeah. recently they have they have amended that uh, use of uh, uh, fine aggregate recycled okay. aggregate in a fine aggregate so right, we right. are talking about the mechanized uh, sand also Right. We are also talking of the putting this specifying mechanized sand also. Yeah. Himalji, just to add to your question, we did some research in CRRI where we used up to 40% uh, recycled uh, aggregate, concrete aggregate actually. Of course, uh, laboratory made and uh, we cast some RCC beams and all and we found a good um, response uh, uh, with respect to load uh, uh, testing and all. So there are some encouraging results are there. People are doing research in this area, but as per 383 uh, IS code, 20% is recommended uh, percentage. Yes, yes. Now. That's what I can add to your question. So, sir, I think we have come to the end of the question session, sir. Uh, so uh, I think uh, again, uh, with a big thanks to Sunil Sambhav Das Ji for sparing his time in this afternoon, Saturday afternoon, uh, that too from Bangalore. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Sir, it sir. is my pleasure. Thank you, sir. So maybe I think we can request Vadhwaji to propose a word of thanks to formally close the webinar. Right, sir. Thank you. Namaskar. Good evening to the respective speaker, the moderator, all the participants and associates of ICI Engineering Center. After a useful and superb presentation by the eminent speaker. It's my proud privilege to express a vote of thanks to everyone. On behalf of ICI NDC, in association with CR and CR, powered by Revered Media, I would like to thank Honorable Speaker and eminent engineer, Engineer Superdeep Dasji, Vice President North ICI, for his enlightening presentation on the topic, Sustainable Development in Cement Concrete, which is a need of the... <coughs> he talked about the improvement of environment by reducing the emission of carbon dioxide that is produced by manufacture of cement and concrete. Yeah, us for use, use of mm -hmm. natural resources and alternative fuels and raw materials supported by case studies. Uh -huh. Curing with CO2 is a new idea. Mixed, by him. Mixed. Thank you very much for the excellent and informative mm -hmm. lecture. We are thankful to Dr. Vivian Kantaraoji, Senior oh. Principal Scientist, CSRI, CRRI, and Honorable Sec Honorary Secretary, ICNDC, for consenting to be the moderator for today's webinar. Thank you, sir. Thanks to Engineer Rajiv Singhalji, Chief Engineer Sipudi, and Chairman ICNDC, and today's for uh, well managing and carrying out this 12th webinar in the series in a highly professional way. Thank you, sir. Our sincere thanks to engineer Vinay Gupta Ji, though he is not present today, he is national president of ICI for his tireless efforts in uplifting concrete institute. Thanks to engineer Supadeep Das Ji, vice president North ICI for presenting the objective, roles and fast growing activities of ICI and its future expansion plans related to the development of concrete and construction. He also mentioned about the ICI publications which are useful to, to our young fellows. Thank you, sir. Sincere thanks to Engineer Rajiv Singhalji, Chairman, Dr. Vivian Kantarawji, Honorary Secretary, Engineer uh, Mank Rawalji, Co-Chairman, and all committee members of ICA and DC for taking initiative at their personal level in arranging unique and knowledgeable, le knowledgeable lectures related to the present day need by persuading and inviting specialists in their respective fields to impart knowledge to all the concrete lovers. 
I want to express my thanks to our state, Mr. Prabir Bhattacharya ji and his entire team of Messrs. C and CR and Robert Media for their logistic support and making necessary amendments in organizing this webinar in a highly professional way. I'm also thankful to all the concrete and cement loving participants for attending in large numbers and making this webinar successful. Lastly, as already appealed by our chairman, Delhi area participants who are not members are requested to enroll themselves and become members of ICA and DC. Thank you all once again. Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.